Hey guys, I had someone recently ask me about HVAC Pro, which is a programming package uh, designed by Johnson Controls for several of their controllers. So what I decided to do is a short video on the basic functions of this software and we're actually going to go through it. I'm going to show you just a few simple steps on how to write a basic program. This by no means will answer all programming questions because they, you know, many of those questions can be very application specific. But what I wanted to do is just to give you a brief overview. So stay with us, check out the video. Also visit my blog at systemcontroltech.com. And uh, here we go. Let's see what we can do Let's see to uh, help you with uh, HVAC Pro. This is the basic interface for HVAC Pro. This particular type of software is uh, used to program various uh, Johnson Controls devices. There are VAVs, there are unitary controllers, uh, in, in those type of uh, uh, systems. It, uh, it's commonly used with these devices on an N2 network, which is a Johnson Controls communication standard. But uh, what we're going to do in this video is just give you a little overview of some of the functionality of HVAC Pro. You see here the Q&A, the inputs, outputs, parameters, and side loop. What we're going to do to get a little better understanding of some of this is we're simply going to start a new program. We're going to go up to File and we're going to click New. This brings us to this pop-up window where we can select the type of application that we're doing. Uh, this is already selected as a rooftop application but I'm just going to scroll through here and you can see the various other types of applications that there are. Here we have fan coil, unit ventilator, heat pump, and uh, just various different types of applications. VAVs, single duct, dual duct, and you know there's just a lot of functionality in this. What we're going to do is just do the run through of the question and answer portion of HVAC Pro to give you a little bit of understanding an idea of what this program does, how it actually programs, and just talk about some of the basics to get you started. By no means will this fit into every application. Every application is always just a little bit different, but this might give you a little bit of an understanding for your project, something that you're working on. So what we're going to do with this particular program that we will write is we're going to simply use a constant discharge air temperature VAV, or I'm sorry, air handler. Single path air handler, just something simple. And once we hit OK, it's simply going to bring us to the question and answer screen. And what this will do as we answer the questions that it asks, it's going to go ahead and put in a lot of the programming components for us. Okay, this particular unit, we're just going to select that it is heating and cooling. Uh, let's see, a mixed air low limit required. If you are monitoring your mixed air temperature, a sensor in your mixed air system, you know, mixing the outside air and the return air within your system, you should do this. It gives you a little more control. It's also going to create a, uh, a few set points to where you can adjust to help keep your air handler from tripping when it gets super cold outside. So we're going to go ahead and do that. The economizer of your unit, there are several choices. Of course you can select none. You can also have it software into if you're going to be controlling this through Metasys or uh, some other type of system. We're going to go ahead and select the into and go on to our next question. Is there a separate minimum damper duct used for minimum position. In some air handler systems there will be a set of dampers that when they are opened 100 percent that the volume of air that can move through that set of dampers is considered the minimum outside air that the system can provide. 
Other systems will simply hold the dampers open to a minimum position. These are some of the things that you will need to know about your system prior to writing this program. For this one, we're simply going to select no. We're going to say that we have just a minimum position for the outside air dampers, and that will help us in controlling our CO2 levels. How is the minimum damper controlled? Either two position or minimum closed loop volume control. We're going to go the minimum closed loop volume control. Select the type of airflow measuring, pilot tube, and we're just going to run through some of these. Uh, like I say, it's nothing that we're going to be able to answer every question about, but just kind of give you an idea of how this software works. Uh, is a minimum damper position reset from air quality. If you have a CO2 sensor somewhere in your building, you can use this to actually give feedback to your air handler and use it to modulate your minimum position of your dampers to help control CO2. But for this, we're just simply going to say no. For unreliable outdoor air tensor, air control sensor, command outdoor air damper 2. Say if you lose your outside air temp sensor, do you want it to close, go to the same position that it has been in, go to 0%, it's completely up to you. What we will do is just select last reliable position. If airflow station input becomes unreliable, the minimum damper goes last reliable position. Once again, a lot of this is going to be application specific for whatever type of application you're doing. This is another point that I just wanted to take a minute to look at. How is shutdown mode activated? You can do this either using Metasys Extended Architecture using a software point or you could actually have a some type of a push button system or even a relay connected to a binary input on your controller. Whatever you decide on that, that is what will control your system for, you know, shutting down at the end of the day or, you know, whenever it is not needed. Another point here is the fan system control type. If you are going to be using a system that has a VFD on it, you're going to need to also have you know static pressure sensors and that sort of thing and that is going to determine the type of controller that you're going to use because you're going to need a specific number of inputs and outputs you know you've got to be able to control that drive you could even go with a constant volume uh, just you know if you're just using just a motor starter to start a fan constant volume control uh, but for this one we're going to actually set it up as if we were putting a VFD in this system here we are in our program. Now what we have here, of course our question and answer list is right here. We can go and review those. If you make any changes, it is going to have you to answer the remaining questions from the point where you made the change. Over here we have, if we select one of the buttons up here, we can view our inputs. You can see our analog inputs here, binary inputs. You know, it really tells you a little bit of information and already goes ahead and gives you some configuration of how you would connect various components in your system. The same is true with the outputs. You can see here, damper control, you know, analog output one, uh, your, you know, your mixed air damper or minimum air damper command is analog output two, cooling valve, and that sort of thing. And then when you wire your system, you will have to follow these connection points to make sure that it works properly. Looking at your parameter screen you will see various uh, types of set points. A lot of this you know you'll have to configure before you get your system up and running. Now you'll notice here that it is just starred out for these. The reason for that is we are not currently connected and commissioned into a controller. If we were it would actually show us the current state of this controller. Now, we, since we're not connected to it, it just, you know, puts a star there for us and just lets us know that we're, you know, not connected. We're not seeing points. 
if you look into some of your points here, here's your discharge set point. You can adjust these here if necessary. Quite simple, we'll just enter your new value. You can change your units, display precision. You can change the name of it and that sort of thing. But we're just gonna leave it as it is. And this is pretty basic setup. This is nothing overly complicated. If you want to get a little further information about your inputs, such as the type of sensors, that sort of thing, uh, to set up some configuration of your sensors, simply go to one of your inputs, double click it, and in here you will be able to adjust the type of sensor it is. If you're using, say, a current sensor instead of a voltage, you can also adjust the range, the input range, high and low, as well as you know the output range your units and just quite a bit of information here very customizable and you can also do the same with your outputs say if you're using a an output your supply fan coil uh, if you're going to your cooling valve if you're going to uh, you know your type of control here is currently set up for current but if we wanted to we could change it to voltage go zero to ten volts and change the units which I don't know why you would want to do that it's usually left in percentages and once again you can change your name and all that sort of thing but this is a pretty basic setup of an air handler control a little bit of information that may be useful to you you will also notice sometimes you will come to the points or the various sections here in your uh, display and you can actually close these up or sometimes depending on the program a lot of them will be closed already and you can simply double click them and expand them to give you a little more information about what's in there it's fairly simple now the next thing that we will look at we will be setting up a VAV to go along with this so we're simply going to close this one out we're not going to save it so we're simply going to close it out and start a new project and here we're simply going to go down to a VMA single duct unit. That way we have a air handler that's going to be supplying our air. We have a VAV that's going to be controlling the air sent into our room. Basically the same type of setup, a question and answer type session. Simply go on through it, integrated actuator or if you have one that has an external actuator you know that's what you'll have to answer here simple simple straightforward setup if you have a fan power terminal this is where you would select that uh, whether you're running exhaust that sort of thing thermostat type if you have a warmer cooler adjust or a slider you know some type of a slider or something on your thermostat you will select that here you know uh, you can set kind of a range. You can also have a remote set point adjustment depending on the thermostat that you're using. If uh, We're just going to put a warmer cooler adjust on this one and we'll, you'll see how that it populates with that. Now, occupancy, if you want uh, some of the thermostats that they offer have an occupancy button right on the thermostat where someone can simply walk over, hit that button, and it'll turn the VAV on. And it's really up to how your facility uses their system. We're not going to allow it on this one. No occupancy sensor. Again, we do not have an occupancy sensor in this room where if someone comes in, it sees that someone is in the room and it turns the air on. We're not going to use that. Initial warm-up, we don't really need that. Binary input for low limit mode, we don't need that. Summer winter compensation of zone. If you're going to have it to adjust a few degrees up or down, you know, with a change in seasons, you can add basically a summer winter switch to it, but we're not going to use it on this. Lighting control, you know, if you're going to be using uh, the, VF, the VMA controller for controlling your lights, of course, they do come with additional inputs and outputs that are often not always used. Uh, I know we use some for controlling exhaust fans and other things just depending on where they're located at in the building. And we're just going to get on through here. And here we are in the VAV control section. Okay. 
our inputs we have here, analog input one is zone sensor, zone temperature. Most of the time there's just a cable that plugs in and that plugs into the VMA, that plugs into the thermostat. And even though it says analog one, most of the time it comes in through the cable. We don't necessarily have anything connected to analog input one. However, it does use that value in the program. So just be aware of that. Of course, analog input two for remote adjust. Yeah, measuring your airflow is going to be right here. Your outputs, of course, you have your damper command. Now, you can go in here, double click it, as I showed you earlier. We can see the various parameters for that, depending on the direction that you need for the dampers. You can change that right here. Direction to close is clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on literally the side of the VAV that your uh, actuator is mounted on. You know, you can change that here. It's very simple. Uh, you can also change your, you know, change of, you know, change of value increments, display precision, and quite a few other things in here. But it's pretty straightforward. Like I say, this is for a VAV. Um, nothing too complicated. In this section here, once you have your program loaded, or if you already have the specs from your drawings for from your engineers as far as the amount of airflow, you will set those in here. Once again, you can just double click the point, enter your new value, say we were going to go to a thousand, and it will put that into the system. And when you load your VAV, those will be the values that are in that VAV. Up here on the options tab, if you wanted to get a little further into it, you have your view here. You can go to commissioning, test and balance, diagnostics. You know, there's various things that you can do with this. You can go into the uh, your PID loops, as I showed you earlier. Sometimes we simply need to double click here, supply flow cooling the cooling PID loop you can go in here and actually currently not seeing anything because once again we're not connected to a controller you can go into you know your calibration which again we're not seeing data from that controller but if you were commissioned into the controller you would but uh, HVAC Pro is a very powerful tool you can do a lot with it and uh, you can uh, it has a lot of great features uh, there are a lot of benefits to using this when you're trying to troubleshoot a system. You know, you can makes it a little easier to verify wiring. You know, if your points, you can verify that your points were pulled incorrectly to Metasys and that sort of thing. I hope this video helps you uh, better understand some of the functions of HVAC Pro. Uh, if it is helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to drop me a comment. Be sure to subscribe. And I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do to help answer them. And visit my blog at systemcontroltech.com.